The fourth move I want to consider is bishop to b5 check, which I personally think is one of the most accurate choice. And against this, you already know what to do. Yup, c6, pawn takes c6, knight takes c6. And now, black's idea is very simple. In the majority of the cases, you want to play bishop to d6, protecting the pawn, followed up with bishop to g4, pinning down this knight. And then depending on the circumstances, you can castle on the king side and later on throw your g pawn up to the board. Let's see how we can achieve all of this. Well, in the database, d4 is by far the most popular choice trying to get the pawn back so we are going to play bishop to d6 defending there is a small trap here guys that if your opponent think that hang on i can win a piece with d5 well guess what it is now white who is going to lose the material after knight captures d5 as simply white queen cannot take this knight due to this old trick bishop to b6 nabbing the white sweetie so nope that is right out of the equation the second most popular choice in this position is queen to e2 check and against this black should play bishop to e6 which at first sight looks like very inaccurate as white can play the move knight to g5 and attack this bishop but here comes another nasty trick starting with castle on the king side and the point is you won't believe this knight captures e6 black plays queen to b6 not only sacking the bishop but now sacking the rook so what's the point well here is the answer guys rook to e8 exploiting the fact that white major pieces are on the e file so now by force white has to take this rook and after knight takes e8 black has a queen for the two rooks which is generally okay but because white is far behind in development this is obviously better for the black well we get some forcing lines bishop takes c6 queen takes c6 white has to castle and when black recapture the piece, white has two choices. If we try to defend the c pawn with c3, black can also defend his pawn with g5. So this is not good for white. And there is a high profile game in the database continue with bishop takes f4, where black shows the power of his queen by first capturing this bishop and then take on c2 which allow him to munch few important pawns and at the end when white double up the rook and create the only thread he calmly defend this with knight to d6 okay now the c3 knight hanging so white has to defend it but here comes the winning blow b5 and the idea is very obvious b4 dislodging the knight and then taking either of this pawn well indeed after the few moves black managed to win the game and get the full point so then we come to the top choice castle on the king's side and after this yup we castle and when white plays the move c3 consolidate his pawn chain here comes the super surprise guys. If you look at the database, bishop to g4 has been exclusively played here. However, I found this very interesting tricky line starting with h6. Our idea is we really want to play g5 and attack white on the king side. Well, before we move on, one important thing I like to mention that GM Nipom Nishi, world championship challenger and the leading expert of this line, confirms that this position is slightly better for the black and as a King's Gambit player, you should avoid it. 
so you can now understand the venom behind this wonderful line okay let's see what is our overall plan well the theory goes like this knight b to d2 you play g5 grabbing every single space on the queen side and please note that the important factor in this line is white's dark square bishop always remain a passive creature thanks to our wonderful pawn g now we are going to see a model game that how we can put these things in the practice in a fide game between two grandmasters white choose the move bishop to d3 avoiding black's bishop to f5 and threatening knight to e4 so black plays rook to e8 covering that square and after knight to c4 black just calmly retrieve the bishop back to c7 okay queen to c2 happen and black plays bishop to e6 an alternative location and please pay attention guys here comes the most important plan in this line what really black wants to do is he wants to maneuver this knights to this juicy e3 square and then launch the kingside attack whereupon in majority of the cases white is clearly lacking the plan except coming on the queen side and this is exactly happen in the game white plays b4 black plays a6 and after a4 what else but rook to c8 white continue his aggression on the queen side with b5 but after pawn takes pawn takes and the move knight to e7 now you are going to see our idea right in the action bishop to a3 finally that bishop has been unleashed but too little too late knight to d5 first knight is ready to rock on on e3 square and after rook to e1 what else the second brother comes right into the mix with knight to g4 where it is nearly impossible for white to survive in this positions white thought he can handle this with bishop to c1 and everything is protected but what has been missed out is the tactic strikes at the other end of the side black deliver this nice surprising package bishop to a5 where he has some clear threats of sacrifice on c3 which unfortunately for white cannot be denied for example if you play bishop to d2 then black can simply take on c3 and after some obvious sequence bishop takes c3 rook takes c4 bishop takes c4 and the move knight to e3 it is black who come out as a complete advantage position from this line so that is the threat here guys and white has to be very careful and accordingly white tried the move knight captures a5 removing this dangerous bishop but after queen takes a5 triple attack white has to move c pawn only to find the root shock knight to e3 bishop takes e3 and after knight takes e3 sadly enough black resigned the game as rook takes e3 and pawn takes e3 white is a clear exchange down for absolutely no compensation at all last but not least what to do against the move bishop to c4 black can simply take on d5 however i think c6 is more accurate choice here consistent with our approach so that after pawn takes c6 knight takes c6 it doesn't matter whether white continue with d4 or castle both leads to the same path for example castle on the king side we play bishop to c5 check king to h1 castle on the king side and after c3 which has a clear intention of d4 once again if you look at the database bishop to g4 exclusively played here 
But if you have remember our last approach, you will easily find the next black move. Yup, at 6, g5 is our on agenda and after d4, bishop to d6, knight b to d2 and this time we can take the benefit of this position by first playing bishop to f5 so that it can influence some more active squares. Okay, once again I am going to show you a model game between two grandmasters where white continue with knight to h4, attacking this bishop and after bishop to h7, he just played bishop to b3, trying to exchange via c2 square. Well, no prize for guessing black's next obvious response, that is g5, the same old story. This time we are attacking the knight and after knight to f3, black indeed continue with his routine business, namely rook to e8 and then launching these two knights on the juicy e3 square. Okay, white plays knight to c4, bishop to c7 and now bishop to c2. But I think it is black who is more than happy with this exchange as white's attacker is gone. And now before doing the knight dancing maneuver, black even take the space on the queen side with b5 knight a3 and a6 so that after bishop to d2 he just connect the rook with queen to d7 before doing the very important knight maneuver. Okay, rook even happened. Black plays rook to c8 and seeing that black knight or the pawn coming on the king side, white played the move h3 stopping our one of the knight coming on the g4 square and this question maybe comes to your mind now what well there is a saying in chess every single pawn move create weakness and this time around one can easily see that white has severely weakened the g3 square so the natural response is knight to h5 and then putting the knight on yet another important square. Well, the game finished very quickly. White plays king to g1 and after knight to g3, first is exchange one pair of the rook and then play rook to e1. But with the space on the king side, I think this exchanges only helps the black as after queen to e6, it is black who get the open file and maybe white thought that I can hold on to this position with more exchanges, bishop takes, pawn takes and now b3 protecting the a2 but doing so he allow black pieces to infiltrate on his territory with queen check, king to f1 and now bishop to f4 whereupon position looks very scary for the white. Okay, he tried to activate his bad knight with knight to b1 and exactly here black find the elegant tactical blow, namely b4. Ripping apart the pawn structure as white cannot play c4 due to d4 pawn hangs. So in the game, white choose c captures b4 but that simply allows knight takes b4 attacking the queen. Queen to e2 has been played, but this move simply loses the pawn after the following sequence. Queen check, queen to e1, and now knight takes a2, so that once the queen get exchanged, one can easily see the domination of black, and without any words, you just like to see the engine evolution here which clearly says that it is black who has a completely winning advantage from here. That's it guys. I hope you enjoy and learn this high profile trickiest line against the king's gambit which not only contains lot of tricks and traps but if you go through them properly, 
you will find that white is really struggling in the majority of the cases. You can definitely use this as a complete surprise weapon in the tournament practice and get some quick wins against the King's Gambit. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.